Hi, my name is Keely Keller. I'm the Director of Professional Learning at Learner's Edge. We are going to talk today about digital lesson planning. My colleague Marcy Harris wrote a great informative blog on digital lesson planning about a year or so ago. You can find that on our chalk blog at learnersedge.com. I recently reread it because of all of the different lesson plannings that I'm sure teachers are doing right now in person and hybrid and hybrid in person and hybrid at home and distance learning. Um, so lots of different formats for lesson planning. And I decided to take her blog just kind of one step deeper into a day in the life of a teacher in 2020, um, kind of tongue in cheek, but also very realistic and true. And so what I've created here is one slide of a PowerPoint presentation that you can use and customize to your own liking. Um, to do that, you would just need to save a copy for your own use by going to file, make a copy, copy the entire presentation, and then you can customize that copy to your, to your heart's content. I wanted to just take a few minutes to give you the highlights of this method um, and also just some things to keep in mind as your lesson planning coming into the 2020-2021 school year. The first thing that you will notice is that I broke out um, each of the subjects by where the students are going to be. So you'll see in-person, hybrid, in-person meaning some of your students are at school, but some are also at home all completely distance learning for some students who are choosing that option, or maybe your district is just doing distance learning. And then down at the bottom, I included some formative assessment that might be helpful as well. Um, and so, like I said before, you can customize this as needed. Um, one thing to keep in mind right away is that just because students may be in different places does not necessarily mean they have to do different things. You can probably see here from my example that um, in, in the lesson plan for math, students are actually doing the same problem of the day, the same video introduction, and the same exit ticket. Um, the only difference really is if they're doing fraction stations or fraction practice. And here's an example of that lesson. Um, and here is the difference. So if this is for a student that is at home, or I'm sorry, in school, they would do their fraction packet as part of their station. If it's for a student who is at home, um, they would only do the fraction practice and then would save their fraction stations for another day that they would be at school. And then there is also um, an exit ticket as well for the fraction. And the cool thing about this is as a hyperdoc, um, you can link all of the resources that the student is going to need right within this hyperdoc. Um, so as you see, the student just clicks on exit ticket, it takes them to the exit ticket, they can fill it in or print it off or whatever they need to do with that. Um, and I tend to write my hyperdocs in this very simplistic format because it makes it very easy for many if not all of the students to follow, and also for parents to follow as well, um, because we do know that we need their support um, right now as well. Another thing to keep in mind here is that, again, while students are in different places, it doesn't mean you can't all meet as a class. And so in social studies, um, the purpose here was to introduce students to a brand new project that's going to be coming. And I wanted all of the students to hear all of the same from information. And so I scheduled a live class meeting um, via Zoom. And essentially, all the students are doing the same thing. We're doing it together. Um, I even, even created an anchor chart. This one happens to be um, about um, firefighters. Um, and so students can, you can pull this up on your Zoom screen and students can provide answers via chat um, or verbally. And you can do this anchor chart right with your students as they're watching you on screen. Um, so that's two of the tips that I have for you, um, the use of HyperDocs. Another great thing about HyperDocs is just the idea that you can customize it. So you can create one HyperDoc for the whole class, but then you can quickly kind of copy that and make a different version for small groups of students who may need additional supplemental assistance or even students who um, might need some extension activities as well. Um, so you can do that in a small group or you could even individualize a hyperdoc for one student and, and maybe their parent or an educational assistant or something like that as well. Um, so hyperdocs are a great thing to learn and use as a teacher. 
Um, secondly, I am recommending that teachers get as much information about tech tools as they can, um, just because of the changes to our educational landscape. And I've included three different examples of that in here. The first was the use of the HyperDoc using a Google Doc. And as you saw within that Google Doc, then I linked out to other Google Docs or other activities that students needed to do. So Google Docs is a great tool. Um, the second tech tool I used was um, called Epic. And this is a platform where students can actually create an Epic account and books will um, be read to them. They'll see the visual images of it. So this is a great option for students who maybe need to do a reread um, to increase their reading fluency, or maybe the pictures are important for your English learners. Um, there might be different reasons that you have a student actually reading um, that with Epic, but I would definitely um, recommend you checking to Epic for your students. And then the third is Seesaw um, Learning Journal. Um, and this is the common sense review of it, um, which is, as you can see, great. Um, teachers are using Seesaw a lot. It is a great way to do formative assessment um, and also share learning with um, parents as well. And so I highly recommend Seesaw. If you're looking for more tips and tricks, we do have a great course, 5093, which is Digital Tools in the Connected Classroom. And it's the course I'm recommending to all teachers right now due to our changing educational environment. Another strategy that's useful with this lesson plan model is the use of themes. As you see here um, in science, we were introducing research. And so the students were working through different activities that involved research, but then I pushed that also into the writing. And so um, for the writing activity, we decided to do animal research because of the fact that it tied so nicely in with science, um, but it also encourages students to, to write as well. And so um, students will do some brainstorming and they will do an I know and I wonder activity um, and then share in their Seesaw Learning Journal what animal they're researching and what do they want to learn about their, their animal um, as well. And then parents are aware of what the, the student is researching. The student has verbalized you know, what their learning goals are specific to the research and um, everybody's on the same page with that. Um, and then you can weave other, other things into that as well. Um, as an example, because we were doing research and talking about nonfiction writing, um, we're doing some more work with that in a community helpers project in social studies. And so that theme of research really was helpful to kind of tie the learning together in that day, week, and actually a couple weeks. So that can be useful. Another key thing to keep in mind as you're teaching online or hybrid or in person is that it's really important to keep our students engaged, um, especially when they're sitting at a computer or staring at a screen. Um, so I recommend the use of multimedia as often as possible. Um, so videos, um, use, use the use of Epic for the books, just different um, pieces of multimedia that can get them engaged. I recommend using social media. Uh, when possible and appropriate, just because that's something that students are using and um, their engagement will increase if we're actually using tools that they, they use on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Um, and then finally, what I want you to remember is collaboration is really going to be key with this lesson planning because um, you are one teacher and you have plenty to do. Um, and then on top of it, you're being asked to create lesson plans for multiple students, multiple needs in multiple places. Um, and so it's like lesson planning to the 10th degree. Um, so collaborate with your, your grade level team, collaborate with your department team as well. So you might have one teacher who is only lesson planning for math and science and another who is lesson planning for social and reading, but you're sharing lesson plans. Um, or maybe in the science department of the high school, one teacher is working on lesson planning for one unit while the other is working on lesson planning for another unit. And then you're teaching both lessons. Um, it is just really important in this time when we're expected to do so much with so little time that you're working collaboratively with your peers as well. I hope this was helpful. And remember, you can customize this all on your own. All you need to do is just make a copy um, you know, of the entire presentation, and then you can customize it um, to how 
it will work for you. I hope you enjoyed this and find it useful. Thank you.